What's up? It's Rob Cressy, and I am super excited to share my latest creation that I believe can help you design your best self. And what I created was a guide to creating a morning routine that serves you. So what I wanted to do was walk through the guide and share some nuggets that I've learned along my journey that can help you on yours. And if you're interested in downloading this guide, I will share a link to this in the description or in the comments. So let's get this party started. So when it comes to uh, designing your best self, uh, one of the things that I attribute so much of my success to, both my positive mindset and my mindset in general, is my morning routine, a.k.a. the way that I start my day every single day. Because the way you start your day sets the tone for how the rest of it is going to go. And I was not always like this. And I have to think about when did this actually start, and it's when I started my entrepreneurial journey, when I went from uh, making multiple six figures to making zero dollars overnight to start my own business. And I was like, all right, everything is on me now. So what did I do? I audited the success habits of the most successful people, the people that I aspire to do things like and to be like. And I said, all right, what are the things that they're doing in the morning that contributes to their success? So over the course of a decade, I've taken a little bit here, a little bit there and implemented in myself. And I did this because I didn't want to look back 20 years later and say, if I had only dot, 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 I am not someone who even believes in the word regret. I'm not living a life of regret. So I want to make sure that I do everything in my power to create my best self every single day. And that starts first thing in the morning. And with this, designing my best self, uh, I have nine principles that are part of my morning routine. And they are, I'll talk about each one and then I'll dive deeper. Number one, design the first 90 seconds of your day. Number two, practice gratitude. Number three, control your inputs. Number four, learn something. Number five, create your being. Number six, journaling. Number seven, meditate. Number eight, design your day. And number nine, work out. So now let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these. So number one, design the first 90 seconds of your day. And this is so important because once again, the way you start the day is gonna set the tone for it. So the very first thing that I do every single morning for the last decade is I say, today is gonna be a great day. And actually, that comes from the movie Jerry Maguire. And in the movie, I think he says, the late date, the late great Dickie Fox says, I clap my hands and say, this is going to be a great day. And I heard that and I was like, that makes complete sense. And think about it. If you have two people, who do you think is going to be happier, more successful in living their best life? The person who says, today is going to be a great day, first thing in the morning, or the person that does not do that. Which of those two do you think has a greater probability of it? Doesn't mean the other person who doesn't say it can't be amazingly successful. They can be. But this becomes the first positive drip right out of the gate. Boom, today is going to be a great day. And I really say this to myself in the first hour or two or even throughout the entire day. I don't know, three or five times a day. And why do I do that? Drip, today's going to be a great day. Drip, today's going to be a great day. Drip, today's going to be a great day. So when people are like, Rob, how are you so positive? Well, I say to myself, today is going to be a great day multiple times a day. And guess what happens? I have a lot of great days. And the thing of this is um, we all get to control how we start our day. And for me, this is the simplest way 
to design how I'm going to start my day. I'm not letting somebody else do it because I know so often the first thing that a lot of people do is they jump on their phone. That's letting somebody else control your day. That's somebody else's agenda. And I'm not about that life. I'm about building momentum. And the way you start building momentum is by saying today is going to be a great day. And in my first 90 seconds, boom, that's number one. And then the second thing I do is practice gratitude. So as I walk from my bed to my bathroom, I'm zombieing because it's early in the morning. I'm like, Ugh. and I go and I brush my teeth. And we could all just sit there and brush our teeth and it is what it is. Or you can use that as an opportunity to once again, add another positive drip to your life. So what I do is I say three things that I am thankful for every time I brush my teeth. So I've turned brushing my teeth into a trigger for gratitude. So my eyes will be closed and be like, I'm grateful for my wife, I'm, I'm grateful for my dog, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to create videos today. Boom, just like that, I've given myself a drip of gratitude. Because once again, we wanna start building momentum right out of the gate. And all of this happens in the first 90 seconds of the day. And this isn't the only opportunity for me to uh, practice gratitude, but it's the earliest part because now every time I brush my teeth, Boom, I'm dripping that. And what I think a lot of people miss when it comes to routines and certainly in the morning is the compounding effect. Yeah, do it once, that's cool. But do that every single day for a year. Or in my case, do that every single day, oftentimes twice a day for a decade. What do you think that does for you and your being when you're living in gratitude, saying three to six things every single day that you're grateful for? day after day after day, you can't help but have some sort of energy and be some sort of way because you're living in gratitude. You're so thankful for everything that you see around you. And it's like, well, Rob, I don't know what in the world to be thankful for. All right, well, this is the good news. Now you got a lot of opportunities to look around and be like, man, I'm thankful for having this toothbrush. Because if you've ever been somewhere where you don't have a toothbrush, that really sucks. Boom, it gives you the opportunity to be thankful for even the smallest things or in the biggest things. The key to this is you want to be intentional about this habit. So what you wanna to start to do is build the connection between brushing my teeth and gratitude. Boom, nice, simple connection. So one thing that you can do is, if this is new for you, just write a little note to yourself and put it right next to your toothbrush that says gratitude. That way you've got a little reminder that's like, boom, let me start doing that. After a week, it'll probably become very natural for you where you won't need that note. But that's what I would recommend doing if you truly want to practice gratitude while brushing your teeth, just write it down and put it right next to your toothbrush. All right, number three. So we're, nine, we're only 90 seconds into the day. Today's gonna be a great day. Boom, three things that I'm thankful for. So one of the most important things in my morning routine, and really this is my entire life, is controlling your inputs. And this is key to my mindset because I am in control, not the world. And one of the things that you're gonna hear from me a lot is that I fight against the world who's always trying to grab my and our attention. The second you turn on the TV, it's fear and anxiety and worry, or you jump on social media and it's a lot of the same, or there's just so much being thrown at you, or you open up your email and it's like, boom, I gotta be in this reactive state. I'm not about that life. I'm not about to let somebody else control the way that my life works. And that starts in the morning by controlling your inputs. And you know why? Because all of that is always going to be there. It is designed to be a floodgate of information and noise and images and videos that is always there for you whenever you want. So how about you give yourself the gift of just a few minutes, or in my case, several hours in the morning where you say, you know what world, not right now. I am in charge of the way that I start my day. And that starts with controlling your inputs. Because doing so 
allows me to focus and be intentional about my growth in my personal development, in my mindset. So the way that I design my best self every single morning is by stacking growth and personal development in mindset in the morning. Because that way, once again, I'm building momentum. Boom, today's gonna be a great day. Boom, I'm thankful for this stuff. You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna go and read. I'm gonna learn something first thing in the morning. I'm gonna get my mind going. And now as you'll see here, one of my favorite quotes, good in, good out, bad in, bad out. So how do you get yourself out of a negative loop? Well, first thing is, let's look at your inputs. What are you putting into yourself first thing in the morning or the rest of the day? It's why I am so vigilant about this. I have never watched the news in my entire life. Why? Because it's not serving me. It's not going to help me get my goals or accomplish what I want faster. And when you feed your mind with good stuff, there is more opportunity and a likelihood of positive results. And I cannot overstate how important this is because the choices that you build will build momentum in one direction or another. For me, boom, I'm a rocket ship in the morning because I've designed that. I've stacked that positivity, learning, gratitude, positive, 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 right out of the gate. That's how you come with this energy. But on the flip side, if all of a sudden you're letting the world do all the thinking for you, I get it. That's how you're just going to continually be in a negative loop. So think about this. Negative loop person over here, positive loop person over here. Look at the difference in what happens in those people's lives when someone's on that positive life and someone's on that I'm not in control of my life train. I'm about that positive life, so that's what I'm doing. All right. Um, Next thing, learn something. So this is along the lines of the positive inputs. So when I was auditing the success habits of the most successful people early on in my entrepreneurial journey, uh, I heard the average CEO reads 60 books a year. And I was like, well, crap, I'm currently reading zero. I should probably do something about it. And naturally, a lot of people run into this resistance. Yeah, but I'm just not really a reader or I don't have time to read. All right, well, you can only hear the average CEO read 60 books a year enough times before you say, listen, I've got to make a change. I'm either about that success life or I'm about that excuses life. So I'm like, we're throwing excuses in the trash. So let's find a way to add reading to uh, my life and making it a habit. So if something is important enough, you will always find time to make it happen, right? 100% because that's what importance is. If something's important, you will find time to make it happen. When is there always time? Well, in my case, it is first thing in the morning when I wake up. Really? Yes, very first thing because my mindset became, all right, my goal is to make today better than yesterday. And if I can make today better than yesterday and I do that over and over and over and over again, I'm going to put myself in a position to succeed and create everything I want in my life. So therefore, if the average CEO reads 60 books a year, then I'm going to read first thing in the morning every single day. That way, no matter what else happens the rest of the day, I have by design made myself better today than I was yesterday by learning something first thing in the morning. So what did I do to build this habit? Well, I started with reading books that I enjoyed. So if you're someone who doesn't currently read, I was at that place. So what interested me? And I started by reading like The 4-Hour Work Week by uh, Tim Ferriss and Thinking Grow Rich um, by Napoleon Hill and uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Robert Kiyosaki. And I was just getting my feet wet as an entrepreneurial, just reading some of these things. And I was green and I was new to a lot of these concepts, but uh, I got really excited to learn this stuff. And this opened the floodgates and is probably the most important thing or habit that I've ever created in my entire life. 
And you know why? Because this opened up two things for myself. Number one, self-awareness. Because when I was sitting there at zero and everything was on me, like no one was telling me when to wake up or what to do with my day. Like literally I have all the time in the world to do whatever I want. I became self-aware and I was like, holy crap, Batman, everything is on me. So now I am in charge of every single aspect of my life, my health, my wealth, my love, and my happiness. Boom, that happened. And then once I built that reading routine, guess what happened? I read a book called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Carol Dweck. And it taught me about having a growth mindset. And immediately it all clicked for me. It's like my life went from black and white to color. And what a growth mindset taught me was that I am constantly learning and hungering to get better. And where previously a fixed mindset would say, I'm stuck in this position, a growth mindset says, I can always learn and improve my situation and get better. So all of a sudden, I became like Neo in the Matrix where I was like, wait a second, you're telling me I can learn anything that I want in my life forever? And I did that by reading books that I wanted for 30 minutes. All I did, set a timer on my phone or my watch. Boom, 30 minutes, first thing. And what I would do, think this is a coffee. I would sit there and drink my morning coffee and read for 30 minutes and that would get me going. But Rob, I'm not a morning person. I'm groggy and slow. I get it. It's a nice, simple way to start to stimulate your mind. And as you start to read books that you enjoy, man, you're really looking forward to it. So I will read uh, a lot of personal development books about leadership, creativity, mindset, marketing, um, everything in between. I'll read autobiographies or biographies. I don't remember which is which. Uh, I'll read sports stuff. So for example, I just finished Kevin Garnett's book and it was incredible. Why? Because I got to hear about his journey. And when you're sitting there with a growth mindset, you're picking up little things. And even though it was a sports book, for me, Kevin Garnett is the best of the best. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a world champion. He went from um, a very harsh upbringing to being an all-time great. All right, what was his mindset? How did he make that happen? So as this is going on, I'm reading my book on a Kindle and I'm highlighting the notes of the best nuggets that come out. Why? Because now I've got a library of all of my notes of all of the books I have ever read for an entire decade. Now I have the opportunity to review them and go back over them. You think that has paid dividends to me in my life? One million percent. So... That's why learning something is so important to me. And remember, we are only 31 minutes and 30 seconds into the day of designing your best self. So we've got today's going to be a great day, gratitude, controlling our inputs, and now we've learned something. Up next, woo, I'm all fired up. Uh So uh, the next part of this, uh, I'll start with a quote from uh, my branding coach. Shout out to Gil, who taught me this. Live by design, not by default. And what does that mean? I want to design my life. I want to design my mornings. I want to design my best self. And so much of the world lives on default. They wake up, they go to work, they come home, they watch Netflix, they do the same thing over and over again every single day. And they're on that hamster wheel where they feel like it's a trap where they can never get off of it. As opposed to, we all have the opportunity every single day to design every single moment of our days. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's why I am the way that I am because I am so excited and on fire for my life because I've designed it intentionally to be stacked with things that I love to do, to have conversations with amazing people who are doing amazing things. And that's how you get up in the morning excited about life. And with this now comes uh, what I call create your being. 
And what this means is uh, I get to decide every single day how I show up in the world, the internal version of me, your being. And for this, you would say, all right, how in the world do you make this happen? And I have uh, a series of documents that I read every single day and say out loud that declare who I am. And there's a great book about this called The Power of Consistency by Weldon Long. And essentially what he says is, most people, number one, uh, never write their dreams down. So it's kind of hard to accomplish your vision if you don't know what you want. And then number two, most people don't spend enough time with their dreams going over it to be consistent enough to make it happen. There's just a lack of awareness. And I was like, that makes complete sense. Because same concept, today is going to be a great day. Or gratitude, you do the same things over and over and over again, it's more likely to happen. Well, now let's do that with our dreams or how we show up every single day. So how do you have a growth mindset and be happy and excited and loving and caring for everyone? Well, this is how I do it. So when I create my being, I've got a document that is my boot sequence. So think of this as a computer starting up. For a computer to function like a computer, it needs to run certain programs. So you push a little button, it goes boom, and it turns on, and then it has your little password, and then it goes to the next thing. And in the background, there's all these little programs that are running. So to be the best version of yourself every single day, what are the habits, routines, or programs that you need to boot up or that you get to boot up? Because the more aware you are of something, the greater the chances that you'll think about it and be about it. So my four elements of my boot sequence, which help create my being every day. Number one, my purpose in life. Number two, the motto from the 30 Days of Excellence group that I'm a part of, led by uh, Jesse Itzler, Chad Wright, and Mark Brown. Number three, three thoughts around creativity and creating, and number four, gratitude once again. So number one, first thing that I read, my purpose in life is to be a positive force for good that leads others to what's possible. Number two, I commit to give my all to every activity I participate in. I pledge to be fully present and try my hardest. No matter how big or small the task is, for the next 30 days, I am committed to excellence. Number three, three thoughts that I read. Be so good, they can't ignore you. That comes from Steve Martin. Number two, be a different brownie. That comes from Jesse Itzler. And number three, what am I creating today? This is a prompt for me to say, what do I want to create? And then the last part about this, it says the gratitude. I've got a lot to be excited about and grateful for right now. I married my dream girl, aka my wife, living and creating my dream every single day, helping one million people, the joy and love of Rally, my dog, Creator Circle, which is a, uh, a group that I'm a part of. I'm really excited about that. Uh, the NFL Hall of Fame enshrinement. So at the time, I put in things that I'm excited about. In August, I went and saw Troy Palomalo and Bill Cower, uh, two of my favorite uh, coaches and players ever since I'm a Steelers fan, get inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, next one, I was going to San Diego for a fantasy football draft. So I was really excited about that. So I put that in there. Next thing, the Arte Syndicate and how it will help me grow my business and my mindset. This is a group that I'm a part of. I'm so excited about that. The next thing, the Big Ass Calendar Club in having a 15 out of 10 year. Uh, this is a group that I'm a part of led by Jesse Itzler. It's a one year long program designed to make this the best year of your life. Next thing, my speaking career in speaking in front of a sold out arena. Man, I just sit there and I close my eyes and think about speaking in a sold out arena. 
And the last one, the massive impact created from my podcast, best year ever. Then I write down three things, something good that happened yesterday. So I played basketball with my friends. The next thing, what am I looking forward to today? Creating a new video. And the last thing, um, well, actually I put this twice. What am I looking forward to today as well? Uh, so uh, I'm really excited and intentional about the different things that are part of my boot sequence. All right. The next part of this is what I am, self-love and vision. So when I create my being who I am inside, this is, uh, this is probably, the all of this is important. This to me is so important because this is creating who I am and how I show up every single day on the insides. And what this is, is a list of declarations, a list of statements that I say out loud and then I feel into every single morning. And I'm not gonna read all of these, but a few of them. I am full of love and I close my eyes and I think about my wife and my dog and my family and I'm just filled with warmth and love right there. And I am a revenue generating juggernaut and I think about all of the times in which revenue has just been flowing to me abundantly and I live in that and I collect all the evidence of that and I am abundantly generous and I think about a time in which I was generous to someone. Maybe I gave a big tip or maybe I went and uh, did something for my wife when I didn't want to. All of these are an example and I go through each one and I speak them out loud and I feel into it. And in the process of doing this, uh, it floods myself with who I am and I feel it. And this is an element of self-love and an element of vision because I am this and I am also going to be this. I'm creating this in my life. And this is just so important and so powerful. So the next thing that I read, and this comes from the book, uh, The Ten Scroll, or the, uh, the Greatest Salesman by Og Mandino. And this is something that was also mentioned in Green Lights, uh, Matthew McConaughey's books, book. Uh, and it's 10 scrolls, my emotions for the day. So number one, today I begin a new life. Number two, I will greet this day with love in my heart. Number three, I will persist until I succeed. Number four, I am nature's greatest miracle. Number five, I will live this day as if it is my last. Number six, today I will be the master of my emotions. Number seven, I will laugh at the world. Number eight, today I will multiply my value a hundredfold. Number nine, I will act now. And number 10, I will pray for guidance from God. And then the last thing that I read as part of this is my word of the year. And my word of the year in 2021 is vision. In 2020, it was give. And I, I say out loud, expanding my vision, vision for my dreams, vision for my family, vision for my business, vision for others' dreams, vision for how I can help, vision for who I can help, vision for what's possible, vision of greatness, Vision of my happily ever after. Have tunnel vision. Be a nut about what I do. Create a vision and a moment, a movement. My vision is bigger than this moment and use my long-term vision to filter my focus. And so often we hear, oh, create your word of the year. And a lot of people do it once, but it doesn't sit with them. For me, to ensure that my word of the year is with me every single day, I read this out loud every single day. That way, I guarantee that vision is part of my day. So that's just creating my being in my boot sequence. And the next thing that I do is designing my day. And what do I want to accomplish? 
what does my day look like? And I have a 10X planner, which is right here, where I write down what I want to accomplish today. And this is simple because now I'm living by design. Boom. What are the top five things that I want to accomplish? This is something that I learned from Andy Frisella. Uh, he has his power list. I'm all about that life. Uh, also on the 10X planner, there's the opportunity to write down your goals. Um, I very much believe in the repetition of writing down your goals in the morning and then again at night. Why do you do that? Once again, boom, consistency to my dream. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm creating. This is what I have. There's also something on there for a quote of the day. Um, this is a simple way for me to prime my mind and I'll pick a word of the day, confidence, go and Google image search, uh, confidence quotes, boom. That is what I am doing. And here was the power list showing the example of sort of what all of this looks like for me. Uh, I helped 10 million people. I spoke on stage at a sold out arena. I created a business system by November 1st. I have a five day a week show. Um, that sort of looks like what my goals are. Quote of the day, be the change you want to see in the world. Now I've got five targets. Then I write down my successes for the day, write the goals down once again. After that, wait, there's more. We're not done yet. So what I do is I very much believe in the practice of journaling, aka morning pages. And this comes from Julia Cameron's book, The Artist Way. And the concept is very simple. And this speaks to me as a creative. It is to take what is in my head and get it out of my head and onto paper. It's a stream of thought of a stream of consciousness. There is no judgment and there is no goal. All it is is to do it. And you can do it for as long or as little as you want. And once again, I started by saying today is going to be a great day. Why? Boom, simple opportunity to do that. Then I just stream of thought and let it go. That way, it's not sitting in my mind. I can just get it out on paper. I end it with today is going to be a great day. Another opportunity. Boom. And it's such a simple practice of just getting things on thought. And I've been doing this for years. And I actually don't go back and review these, even though I could, because it's all in Evernote. But it's just the opportunity to allow something to not stay with you if you don't want it to. A lot of times people will journal about good things or bad things. In the event that it's something bad, what I'll say is, hey, this is what's on my mind. I'm not allowing this to stay with me. I'm releasing this. Boom, it's on paper. <sighs> now I feel better. I feel lighter. It is out of me. That is how I use journaling. And the last part about this is meditate. And similar to the reading, what I kept hearing over and over again from the most successful people was they meditate. And I was someone who never meditated. I very much thought it was this woo-woo stuff. But guess what? Uh, success leaves breadcrumbs. And if 50 people I aspire to do things like do something and I don't at least try it out for size, then it's on me. Because the world is saying, hey, Rob, give this a shot. And with everything I'm sharing, you don't need to do all of this. I'm just giving you possibilities and things that work for me. This is how I create and design myself into being the best version of myself every single day and living my best life. So meditation for me is about the opportunity to add stillness into my life. Remember, we're controlling our inputs so the rest of the world, it's sitting there. It's waiting for you. It's saying, all right, here's Instagram. Here's Facebook. Here's Twitter. Here's TikTok. Here's LinkedIn. Here's podcasts. Here's YouTube. Here's TV. Here's news. Here's media. Here's Netflix. It's all sitting there just waiting for you. And I'm sitting there meditating saying, you know what? I'm going to take five minutes right now and just be in stillness with my thoughts. Look at that. Look at how that stillness felt. And 
my energy and the way that I talk and my pace and what I talk is very similar to the volume in which the world comes at you. I can move a mile a minute because I'm so excited about all this stuff. But take just five minutes or 10 minutes out of your day just to sit back. And even that just little three seconds for me, it feels good. You let it off your chest. And then I'm ready for the day because I've primed myself. I've created my being. I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know what I have. I know how I'm showing up in the world. So I can be the best version of myself for myself and for others. So now when I'm on camera or shooting a podcast or doing a coaching call or having a conversation with someone at the grocery store, I am all of that every single day. First thing in the morning before the world has even gotten to me. How in the world do you think that would uh, work for you? How do you think the things that you want to create in your life will happen by the way that you're intentional with how you're showing up in the world? And then the last thing that I do is I work out because if you don't have your health, you have nothing. And one of the analogies that I've heard that I really like that resonates with me is you could have a billion dollars, but imagine that you've got a sore throat and you can't swallow. You would do anything to be able to have your health back. That, ma- that, that money means nothing to you. And I never wanted to get to a point where I'm 80 years old and I look back at my life and I'm like, man, I can't enjoy life because I'm all hunched over and I can barely move. Uh-uh, I am not about that life. Another thing that I kept hearing over and over again is these CEOs, they were working out and they were working out in the morning. Why? Because fitness is so important to having the right mindset. Because if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you're confident. When you're confident, you make things happen. And for me, it was a very simple trigger for how I started working out. I was 26 years old and I had just gotten out of a relationship, a serious one. And all of a sudden, I'm back on the market. And just like that, I went from fitness is not part of my lifestyle to I've worked out four or five days every single week for the last 15 years. And I do that by stacking it in the morning. Why? Because if something is important enough, you will find time to do it. I know health is extremely important to me. Therefore, I am going to be working out in the morning. Therefore, when I show up on this video to be able to share with people all these amazing things, I'm going to look good. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to be smiling because I've got my swole on. And I know that when I take my shirt off, I want to look in that mirror and be like, damn, you look good. That's how I'm showing up every single day. All I do is set a timer on my phone 30 to 45 minutes every single day, and I work out. And that is my morning routine. And I wanted to share this with you to create some possibilities and opportunities for you. This took me more than a decade of trial and error to create. And remember, I started at zero. I used to be a 20-something party bro who lived hard, worked hard, did not care about my personal development. I did not read books. I was not consistent at many of the things that I just shared with you. So if I can do all of these things, so can you, because I started at zero. And all it took was a growth mindset, some self-awareness, and the desire to be the best version of myself every single day, because I want to look back at my life and say, I lived my best life possible. So I designed it. I created the habits and routines and processes to make that happen. If I can do this, so can you. And if anything that I said here resonated with you, uh, I've got two action steps for you. Number one, I'll drop a link to this where you can download this. And I encourage you to reread this and go over this and create this as your own. And number two, uh, one of the things that I do in my business is I help people with their personal development and their growth and their mindset. I am a champion for champions, people who want to do amazing things in their lives. 
I'm a coach for them. So I encourage you to slide into my DMs or uh, jump on a call with me. Let's talk about possibilities, how I can help you or your team design your best self every single day. Sending tons of good vibes your way. I hope you have yourself an amazing rest of the day.